Welcome to this live stream where we are going to start motorizing our props. We are going to build our first spinning mechanism. This is called a deer motor. Now that's not its real name. They're pretty much found within a lot of motorized props, especially those holiday deer. This is a type of synchronous motor, and that means it only spins at a certain speed. A lamp cord, you plug away into your wall outlet and they start working. You can get them to switch direction by just overcoming its torque limit. So let's see if I can do it with my bare hands. Let's see if we can get it. See how it switches directions? When we bust it out, it looks uncannily like these guys over here. So basically your deer motor, all it is, is exactly these guys, but with a pretty housing and weather protection. Shafts can all be a little bit different. So I'm gonna remove this arm and I'm gonna pop him off. Some shafts are entirely round like this one. Others have the two flat spots. Others just have the one flat spot. This one is a 2.5 to 3 revolution per minute, so he's rather slow. Honestly, a little too slow for me. Trapped inside this board, my little prisoner here, he is a 5 to 6, so he revolves about just as fast as that deer motor. I got this really cool kit that already comes with a lampshade cord, and this one has a switch on it. For an AC motor, it does not matter which way you do this. Once I'm happy with something, then I for real solder everything together or wire nut them. These little bare wires, they'll give you a good little zap. It'll wake you up in the morning, probably a little bit better than coffee. <laughs> these kits or this particular one, and you can buy these separately as well, comes with a coupler and it's got a little screw hole up top for M4 bolts. Typically anywhere from six to eight fits those couplers really nicely. This Inner diameter is a seven millimeter to fit the seven millimeter shaft. And they have the tiniest little set screws. I might need double glasses <laughs> getting this thing in here. The closer your weight is to the center of the shaft, the more weight it's going to be able to turn. If you were to make a linkage off of this, say like this, and then now this needs to rotate like that, the further out your load is, the harder it's going to have a time of supporting that load. So these are great for lightweight props, lightweight limbs, anything heavier, you need to move on to a wiper motor. I have a half inch PVC cap that I've drilled a hole through and we are just gonna get this guy situated in our coupler. And now the Allen key is stuck. So let's put this guy up in here. I'm limited on space here. So once a prop is done, I need to be able to take it apart. So either if it can hold itself under its own weight, I use nothing like these spinny head ones. You don't have to use anything. You can always use like a half inch or three quarter inch wood screw just to screw them together. When you're done with the prop, unscrew them. So here we have our spinning head, but we got no head. So let me see if I've got culprit or ooh. I see you throwing shade at me the whole stream like she's going to screw this up like she always does. All right, you just volunteer yourself. I love these foam heads and you can slip on a store-bought mask and we went ahead and painted this one. You can see the original ugly color and it's got a hole in the bottom, perfect for a half inch PVC pipe. I'm going to slip him up in here like that. So here is our five to six revolutions per minute. He's doing his exorcist thing at you guys right now. You're getting slimed. Let's see if we can add more weight to this. This length is not so bad. He is kind of stable, but you can already see some swaying because of this half inch pipe. Also, our coupling situation has very little surface area. So how can we add more rigidity to something like this? There are so many ways to do this and by no means is my way like the best way. I try and keep my mechanisms as compact as possible. Is there a way that we can clamp it? This is a half inch T. The problem you're gonna find is you can't fit the pole all the way through. So what you're gonna have to do is take a Dremel or sandpaper and see that lip and the entire surface, you're gonna have to sand that down to open it up a little bit so this can turn a bit more smoothly. And adding a little bit of oil, I love using air tool oil, is a great way to go. 
rather than do all that work, I just go with a three quarter inch coupler. Now, a little bit of loosey goosiness, but I'll show you a way to tighten that up. This half inch cap is not the greatest choice because the bottom of it is round. My preferred method is not to use a cap, but to use a plug and the plug has a flat base. They were out of them. So we're making do here, people. It's like Halloween. It's last minute. You're making do with whatever you have at home. I'm going to use this half inch elbow right here, and we're going to slip this guy up here and connect them. So now we have a support. An O-ring inside here, or two of them, will cushion that joint. Sometimes when you ream out the inside of the exact fitting coupler, you do get a very strict clearance joint. So it really depends on your prop if you need a little play in your joints or if you need something very precise, no clearance issues at all. What I like to do is oil it up with your air tool oil because the second you do this, the rubber is going to want to grab onto those walls. And put him back. And I'm going to use a tool to slip it just under the coupling. I'm going to slip him in from the top and down. And use the same tool to kind of get him in there just barely. You can just increase the support if you need to. I see some people that do four supports, so it's kind of like a spider. And what I may do is move him to my chair. This is a lot more stable. And even if I jiggle it, the pole is now turning smoothly. The O-rings are not affecting the rotation because I poured a little air tool oil earlier. So let's say he has a little torso and I'm going to put his head back on. He's getting taller, this guy. Let's see what happens now. All right. He's still going. This motor's still going. Put some clothes on this guy. He is ready to crawl out of the swamp. How do we get this synchronous motor to go side to side? The idea is that he's going to turn, hit a blockade, and be forced to turn the other way, hit a blockade, and then turn the other way. I am going to stick this guy in here. Here we have our side to side motion and you can control it by the placement of the bolts. So let's get our little head up on half. So it's about kind of like placing him where he needs to go. But he's looking pretty good. All right, he's got the side to side look, less exorcisty. The further this head moves away from the shaft, say you need to move him over here like this and rotate him around, the tougher it becomes on that motor. And he's popping out because I didn't secure him all that well. Oh, I got him started again. Oh, can he make the uphill climb? Oh, no, he couldn't. <laughs> he's going back down. Oh, he's trying again. Pretty soon, we're going to be moving on to something beefier so we can accomplish more complex movements. These are shot live for our community members, so I invite you to join. So that way you can be part of the live interaction, join our Discord community where we all help each other out, and the best part, our community build sessions. This happens via Zoom. We all bust out our projects and work on them together. That way, you all don't end up like me with a whole bunch of unfinished projects. And I'm looking at this one right here, haunting you for all the days of your life. See you guys next time. Bye.